Welcome to this session where we will be looking at editing using iMovie. Now in this session, I'm going to be using iMovie on the iPad. That's just because I personally prefer the bigger screen. I have done a tutorial using iMovie on the iPhone as well. So check that out. Basically, it's very similar. The interface is very similar. Some things are in slightly different places, but all the same functionality is there. So it shouldn't make a difference whether you edit off the iPhone or the iPad. Okay, let's start by opening up a new project. The first thing I want to show you is the trailer feature. I'm not going to be editing the trailer today, but let's have a look. So when you open the trailer, you get all of this stock animation here. So I could literally click one of these. So let's say I click Indie, for example, and that gives me a preset to work with. So I get an opening. I get some animation and titles and I get some footage that I can replace with my own. Okay, let me just come out of this because I said we're not going to use this today. So I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to click Movie and I want to show you how iMovie deals with media. So I'm just going to click two clips. Now look at the order in which I click them. And as I open the iMovie project, it imports the clips in the order in which I selected them. So you might recognize this footage from my green screen tutorial. And it gives me a default transition there, which is a cross dissolve. Now I don't want these clips, so I'm just going to delete them. I could just import new video, but I'm going to close this down and start a new project. Okay, so we click new project, we click movie, and I'm just going to select one clip to import for now. So I'll just select this clip here. And that is imported into my timeline and iMovie is ready to start editing. Let's have a quick look at the interface here to see what we've got. Okay, so if I click the question mark in the top right corner, this gives me all the information within the project. If I click the gear icon right next to the question mark, let's see what this brings up. So this is a list of templates that I have. So I can select one of these color palettes here and it will affect the entire project. Below that, I've got a theme. So if I select one of these themes, that again will affect the entire project. For example, if I click neon, that will give me the neon templates within my editing timeline. Below that, I've also got theme soundtrack, fade in from black and fade out from black. I like to select these because that gives me a nice fade at the start and the end of my timeline. Okay, so what else do we have here? The plus icon next to the gear icon is where I access all of my media. So that's my photos and my videos and my audio. Below that, I have show or hide audio waveform. This is great when I have a clip selected and I want to see the audio waveform. Next to that, I have my undo button. And if we jump over to the left side, I've got my record video and photo so I can record directly into iMovie. Next to that, I've got record audio and I'm actually recording the audio for this tutorial inside of iMovie right now. And if we just look above that, we've got done. So that means I go back to my save page and I have more options in terms of saving my media. At the very bottom, we have learn more. If I click that, that gives me a little bit more information about the timeline. Right, I think it's time to import some media and get started with this edit. So I've clicked the plus icon and that's given me a list of options of where I can find my media. So I'm just going to select these. and I've selected video and I've gone to my iCloud drive. So what's great about the latest version of iMovie and iOS is I can select from my iCloud as well as things that are already on my iPad. I'm working off the newer iPad, so I have a USB connector, so I can select from a hard drive that I have plugged in. And that's where I am right now. So I'm finding my footage 
on this hard drive. So I'm just going to look down. You can see that my file naming system says moment. That's because I shot this footage on the anamorphic moment lens, which I've discussed in a previous session. Right, let's find some footage. Okay, I'm looking iPhone footage and we're back to the moment. There we go. So I'm copying that media and it's bringing it in. So I've got a couple of options. If I click more, I can cut away, put picture in picture, split screen, green screen, which we know about, or I can input the audio only. On this occasion, I'm just going to import more footage. I'm not going to worry about the cutaways yet. And as you see, it, iMovie gives me a default transition between the two. So right there, I've got a cross dissolve. Now I might not necessarily want that. And actually, I don't want that. Let's have a quick look. There we go, a cross dissolve. So if I want to change that cross dissolve right there, all I need to do is select it and I get a list of options below. So I can select none. I also have a specific star which directly relates to the theme I selected earlier. I'm going to select none for now. So that just cuts the two clips together. I'm just going to select the star so you can see what this does. It's giving me the default transition for that theme. Just one more time. There we go. And that's quite quick. So I can change the speed of that. If you notice 0.5 seconds is highlighted now it's one second 1.5 seconds for example so I've gone back to having no transition because I like quite sharp cuts when I'm editing remember this footage is in log I've not graded this footage yet but I do have another session on grading log footage inside of the photos app and I'm just selecting more footage to bring into our editing timeline now notice this footage has been brought in where the playhead was. That's the white line all the way down the middle of the timeline. So wherever that is, that is where the footage will be placed. So if you want it at the end, you need to have that at the end. Okay, I'm happy with where that sits. And you'll notice that fade to black has gone on the end of the clip. So the more clips I add, that fade will go on the end. And I'm just copying more media into the timeline. There we go. Okay, so this, this is obviously a rough edit, but it's looking pretty good in terms of what we've got. Let's just play that back. And that camera movement's a little bit shaky there. So I'm just going to trim this clip to suit. So all I do is I select the clip and I just pull the edges to where I want it to be. So that's how easy it is just to change the length of a clip. And we jump to the next one. I just play this. And I think we'll stop it somewhere around here. And again, same process, select the clip, drag the handles across to where I want it. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Change my transition type. And we've got this chap walking. Just trim the beginning of that. Now this is quite a long clip. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut this up and have sort of a jump effect. Have you seen it in films where you're following a person as they travel somewhere and the clip cuts between steps so it makes it a little bit quicker but you also get the sense that that person's still traveling somewhere. I'm going to click, click the little scissor icon which gives me a cut and I'll just go to the next part that I want to cut and select the scissor and split and there we go. And I'm just going to get rid of that so I've got the sense of time passing as this person walks. And there we go, and we'll cut again there. 
So you can see how simple it is to cut clips all directly on the timeline using the little split icon at the bottom. Just get rid of that one because we don't need that one for the effect. And we see the line and we see the person. And we're just going to cut that and let's get rid of that clip. So we've got a little bit more of a jump there and it goes up. Okay, so really rough edit, but it's looking interesting and I'm liking the way that that's going. Whilst we're here, let's have a look at some of the other functionality when we import clips. If I open my media and I'll select this green screen car clip actually, which you will have seen previously in this session. And if I just select that clip there, it will give me some options. So the plus is where I import it. If I click the play button, I can play that clip inside of the browser. Then I click the three little dots and I get these options. So let's have a look. I've just clicked. That's where I want to put the clip. So I've gone back to the clip and I click cut away. Look what happens. It places that clip on the top. And if I play this, it cuts away to that clip. So it overrides the clip that is underneath it. Let me get rid of that and show you a different one. Let's have a look at picture in picture. Again, it goes on top. Just trim that there. And that literally places the clip inside of the clip below it. So it has a picture inside of a picture. And just get rid of that. And let's try one of the other ones. So split screen. So again, places it on top. And we'll just play this. And that gives me a split screen effect. So I have two films side by side. This also works for pictures as well. Now, this is interesting. If I select the clip once it's in the timeline, I also get the options to change the value. So I could change that back to picture in picture if I wanted to without having to delete and go straight back in with media. But I'm going to get rid of that because I just use that to show you the effect. Green screen, blue screen, we know what that is because we've used it in a previous session and I can also import audio. But I'll just do green screen, blue screen so I can show you. Again, what's really great about iMovie is it does the work for me. So if I play this, it puts the clip below where the green screen would be. Okay, so I've got my very basic timeline at the moment and I've selected my theme, so I'm just going to look at potential project filters. So that's quite interesting. So I'm just going to put a black and white filter on there. Just checking what other ones are available. Yep, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to also look at the ones underneath. So the filters underneath. And you can see how they're affecting the individual clip, whereas the black and white filter affects all of them. The filters on the clip itself, because it's selected, only affects the individual clip. Let's have a look. Again, this isn't graded footage, so it looks a little bit washed out. Normally, I would grade this before I went into editing using the Photos app. So I'm just checking the theme templates and the theme fil filters again. Great, okay, so I think it's probably time we add a title to this. So below you can see lots of examples that iMovie has already built in. And I think, just have a look at that. Yep, I'll choose this one and I'll just call this BTS Film Shoot. BTS, of course, standing for behind the scenes. Great, so that's now attached itself to the first clip. And that's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to take the sound of each individual clip because we don't want the background sound for this. Okay, just checking that that's all gone. Excellent. So now I'm going to add some audio. So I go back to my media tab. 
And there we have audio. So we have soundtracks, my music and sound effects. So if I click soundtracks, there are lots of stock sound already available for me to use. The ones with the blue dots are new sounds. So this gets updated quite regularly. So I just download this here. And we'll just select some music to go into our timeline to accompany our film. Okay, I didn't click the plus button there. So let's go back to our sound effects and let's have a look for some music. So I'm going to select evergreen and I click the plus button there, look. And that instantly fits that track to the length of my film. That's pretty cool. So there's no more work needed by me to trim the audio. It's instantly and automatically done it for me. So I've just saved that. Let me come out there and just name my project BTS Film Shoot. And let's have a watch and preview it. There's a couple of clips. And there you have it, one film complete and exported to my photos library. Guys, thank you so much for coming with me on this session and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.